Hi, welcome to a new plug and Groove video. My name is John Skippy. Welcome. Hey, so this is one topic tips number nine. And this will be a fun one. This is getting your own samples into Unify. This is important. Most of us have an absolute bazillion wave samples on our computers and nowhere for them to play in a lot of cases. They're just sitting there in folders, bonus content with something you bought, just sitting there waiting to be used. So use them. So let me show you how to do it and load them into Unify. Uh, so inside of Unify, if you go over here to the layer, when, even with the init patch, Instruments Guru Sampler is our little sampler. I, there's a video I just did, uh, number seven, one topic tips, uh, was all about getting more out of Guru Sampler. We're going to be playing with this, but more later, because first we need to set things up, get samples mapped explain some concepts, show you how to make a library. We're going to do everything from scratch together, okay? So if you follow these steps, you shouldn't get lost. It should work, okay? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers. Good luck. Good luck. Video good luck. Okay, so here we go. So I have on my hard drive over here a whole bunch of samples that I have put into the user's shared sample libraries folder. Um, I've got cymatics because I don't know if you know about cymatics, but join their mailing list for nothing else. They give away gigabytes of content for free all the time of new samples. When they're promoting their libraries that they want to sell, they give away phrases, all sorts of stuff is just, it's worthwhile to follow, get you some cool sounds to work with and they're good guys. I'm going to show you how to do different categories, different things inside a Groove Sampler to help you organize the sample banks. So it's not just a whole blech, folder list forever of samples or something like that, right? So when you look at Guru Sampler, notice that there are three different columns here for samples and the directories. It's very important because the layout of the folder is probably the place where most people will mess up. So we're gonna do this from scratch. Because we're working with drum samples, I'm gonna come over here to drum kit and I'm gonna call up a drum kit patch. Once I get all through 625 patches, oh my gosh. And this patch, we're gonna to point to different samples once we have different samples to point to. But right now we don't. So we're gonna go sit, uh, well, let me explain it this way. If you hit the little gear settings and over here it says data folder, you can hit open and this will show you the, the guts, folders of all the content that Unify references to make its libraries and presets and everything work. If you double click libraries, this is where you'll see the current libraries that you've installed. If you have libraries that you accidentally installed for a plugin you don't own, this is where you'd go to delete those. Um, Otherwise, don't change names and stuff of the files inside of this folder, especially if it's installed from Unify, because Unify has very specific locations and names of folders for things to work. So don't mess with everybody else. Don't, don't, just don't. <laughs> but in this case, we need to go here because we're going to make a new library. In that folder where you don't see, we're going to make a library called Zippy Sample Bank, just because then it shows at the end of the list you can name this library anything you want. I'm not telling you what to name it, but we're going to go up here to save and we're going to call this drum sample map starter. And when it goes to library name, click here and go down here and say new library zippy sample bank. Whatever you name it, just accept you're not going to rename this. You're not going to move it. You're going to just keep the name the way it is. And once I hit save as and save over here on this other, my iPad is being a second monitor to get some of this stuff off the screen. Now, when we go here, we see we have a zippy sample bank folder and there's a patches folder in there. Let's double click to open zippy sample bank. We need to make a new folder called samples because 
we're going to put samples in here. Or not. This is one of the really important distinctions at this point. You have to put FFC file sample maps into these directories. You don't have to put samples into these directories unless your goal is to share this in the future with someone else. If it's Even if it's just somebody you're gonna collaborate with on a project, then you need to put the samples into this folder. If it's just for your personal use on your personal computer, you're not gonna be messing things up and changing things around, then the samples can reside anywhere on any hard drive you have. The SFC file will save that location with the file maps. Uh, in this case right now, this is for my personal use, let's say. So I'm not gonna move the samples. Maybe we'll do an example in a little bit where we do put everything in here so you can see how that works. But I'm gonna open this up. And if you now look inside a Guru Sampler, there is Zippy Sample Bank. So the folder name at the very top, right here in the directories, that is the name that shows up right here in the list. Below that is where you can choose different banks. And we might have, let's say a, uh, let's go over here and we need to close this real quick. And let's say new, we're gonna have a Cymatics freebie drum maps, okay? I also have some maps that are really cool from Glitch Machines. Uh, and it's also called this Drum Maps. They also have textures and stuff, so maybe we'll make a different folder for that. Um, and then maybe another one for cool synth maps. Multi-sampled. Okay, so we're gonna put stuff in there. Now, when I go over here to Guru Sampler, and I go over here to Zippy Sample Bank, there are now three folders for three different banks and nothing in here because we haven't put any SFC files in here. So now we're ready to go to the next step, which is to get software involved to help us make an SFC sample map. Now, you might be wondering where SFC started, that the acronym for the file. I believe it was from Plog they made something called Fort Sondo. That was a sample player. That was the sample map that they used, the, the standard, and we've adopted it ever since then. Now other things can also read SFC files. So I think Fort Sondo is what that stands for. So we need something that can make SFC file maps. And it just so happens there are some free tools available to us. So go to the internet, and first of all, I should point out this video is sponsored by my website, PluginGoo.com. I make libraries for all of these plugin formats, including Wave. <laughs> if you want some Wave samples to import, um, I had it display all the library icons. So there's over 80 libraries now available. It's crazy. There's a Labor Day sale going on right now. I have sales often. Yay. So there you go. Anyway, we want to go over here to bjornbar.de. The link will be in the video description. You can see it right here in the window. Scrolling down, you will see that he has three different applications. And it says back to the Mac, but there's PC versions of these applications as well. There's Session to Wave, which allows you to take a whole session, a whole bunch of samples in one audio file, and split it into separate WAV files. There's Bjorn's Sample Mapper, which will take the samples map them across the keyboard and save a file that your sampler can load. And then there's Endless Wave, which is a wonderful free crossfade looping tool. It's really, really cool. I'm gonna do a separate video on Endless Wave, um, probably for one topic tip number 10, because it's just wonderful. Anyway, if you click these, you'll go to the page where you can get right here to download the application. Um, we've been working with them. So what's really cool is when you run Sample Mapper, and you go to the preferences right here, click this checkbox, SFC export into plugin guru unify format. That allows the maps then to be saved into the format that unify can understand and read and work with. So by doing that, let's go over here to cymatics. I'm gonna load it from the S1 master class, this little mini kit. So it's gonna be a whole bunch of drum samples. And typically on the keyboard, it goes kicks, 
snares, hi-hats, toms, cymbals, uh, percussion. Uh, I'm going to kind of follow that same layout. So all the kicks, all you have to do, this is a very simple sampler mapper. It's not very complicated. It's kind of limited in some respects. Um, I keep asking for new features and new things keep showing up. So, But Bjorn's very busy. It's not something that he is actively working on, which is why there's no technical support. Just works as it is, okay? Anyway, when you let up on the samples, the little import window will open up and you have two options. If you click over here, it's gonna to try to look at the end of the samples to see if there's a note pitch in the names, then it will automatically map them. We don't have that, we have drum samples and we're gonna use this option to start from 36, which is C1 on the keyboard. Step is how many steps does each sample get to play? I'm gonna just say one. So it's just one note, one sample. Import, there they are imported. Now, it has a habit of taking the top sample and stretching it all the way up the keyboard. So we can just go over here to 127 and change that to 47. I think we can go 47. It's, it's a little tricky to get this to work, but somehow you will get it to say 47 or whatever your key range is for the note. And as you can see, it's now gray. If you don't do this, it's gonna end up with this red dotted pattern. That means you have two samples on top of each other. And you can do that and save it, but if you do that, Unify will now randomly choose between the two samples. And if you're gonna do that, it's actually best on the import page, there's a load as a new group option. Use that so you have editing of the samples in an easier way. We're not doing that right now. We could, but not right now. Anyway, so we got the kicks. We're gonna go over here. We're ready for the next sound to be loaded. Let's go to snares and claps. So select all these, drag. Now I wanna remember by looking at the screen, the key range top is 47. So when I let go, I'm gonna go here to start, and instead of starting at 36, I'm gonna say 48. And step size, it always resets to four, change it to one, import. Now I have grown the map even bigger with the kicks and snares. Top note again needs to be 63. And again, it's tricky to get it to go to 63, but if you do the right things, it eventually will let you set it to 63. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so we want to add hi-hats, drag them over here. Look again at the key range, it's at 63. So here we're going to just say start at 64. And again, key step is at four, change that to one, import. And again, uh, when we click this top note, its range is messed up and says 127, what's well, not messed up, it's just 127, so let's say 69. There, whatever it takes, get it to say 69 and hit return. <laughs> so then it works. Uh, and let's add the percussion. So there's not a lot of percussion, but we'll add it. You can put it anywhere. Again, it's not looking at the notes. It's just a big open window saying I'm importing samples. Top is 69, so that means this new sample is gonna start at, right, 70, good job. All right, one step for each sample, import. And this time I don't mind if the top sample goes all the way up the keyboard because I don't have anything else to add to this. So let's go over here, go file. So click save SFZ as, and here we are in the Unify libraries, zippy sample bank, samples, and this is for cymatics. And let's name this, um, this is the S1 drum map. And I usually like to say how many samples are in it so I know kind of what how many across the keyboard, so something like that. Save, and now we can close here. And if I go over here to Unify and I open Google Sampler, go Zippy Sample Bank, go to Cymatics Freebies and S1 Sample Map. Cool sounds. Right? Off you go, it works. It's working as is expected. So let's make a Glitch Machines. This is all sorts of really, really cool. Uh, you're gonna love these sounds. Glitch Machines actually has a special going on at VST Buzz. I talked about it in the live stream on Saturday. Um, let's go over here and back up to Glitch Machines libraries. These are the tactic samples. Let's go composite. And let's go back to Sample Mapper. You wanna come here and say new. 
Yes, we want a new sample map. Now this is one where there's 141 samples. The keyboard range is 128 samples. So you could say 128 samples. I would suggest not doing that. I would suggest doing it up to like 61 samples on a five octave keyboard. If you have an 88 note keyboard, 88 samples. Um, just depends on how, like 98, that's too many. So I wanna go over here, somewhere about right here. Should be 59, click and drag. I wanna start at 36 steps of one, import, done. Since that's all I need to do, all I have to do is go up here and go save instrument as, and this is, uh, tactics one and it's 49 you might get in trouble for using parentheses in this file names I don't know but anyway I'm gonna go up to zippy sample bank to samples uh, glitch machines I want to make sure I'm in the right place and then hit save okay so now if I go over to unify and I call this up. I can now go to Glitch Machines, and there it is. Insanity. Love it. Cool, cool, cool samples. If you're doing any kind of bass music and all that kind of stuff, you need. Super, super cool stuff. So that's one map. Let's go over here. Say we want to start from here and go to the end. That's 82, so it's more than 61, but that's okay because you can transpose. Right here will transpose plus or minus three octaves, the key range. You can use the octave buttons on your keyboard and so forth. So go over here, say new, say yes, click and drag, start, keystone range one, import. Save SFC as this is tactics composite number two. And let's say that this was what was it? It was 82 samples. 82. Save. So now when I go back to Unify, if I go over here and I click the lightning bolt, now I see composite two. More. Beautiful, beautiful stuff, right? So <laughs> it's that easy. It doesn't take long. And I now have hundreds of samples inside a Unify to play with that were on my computer, just sitting there hanging out, doing nothing for how many years? It's really fun to have them available to work with now. So, you know. Layer that with a snare. Hello? Oh my gosh. So much fun. So much fun. Uh, now, when you're getting to doing keyboard sounds that have maps, let's get one of those set up. I'm going to take some samples from a library I'm working on, and we're going to move them out and like pretend like they don't already exist. So we're going to pretend a little bit, okay? So let's go over here to Mega Magic Pads. I'm working with the Wave version of the library, so let's go in here to Waves. And let's say, oh, let's play with Spiteful Spirit Wet. That'll be fun. So that's these samples right here. Copy. And then I'm going to go all the way up to Zippy Sample Bank. Samples. Now, I could put it into the Cool Synth Maps. Let's do that. Let's put it in there. So we're going to say Cool Synth Maps. I have to make a new samples folder. So new samples. And inside of that samples folder, you can put samples. But now I can go over here to Bjorn Sample Mapper, say new, say yes. And I'm going to now drag these from this location. And this is, again, you move and make the SFC once the samples exist and are placed where you want them to stay. I'm doing this as a personal library for my own personal use, right? So let's go over here. When I drag, these samples into Sample Mapper this time. I'm gonna go over here to root key file from name, click that, and you'll see that the names are not right. So let's say, look at the end of the names. By clicking that, boom, now it found what it needed and they're all mapped. 
So you just say import and they're here. And if you click one, you'll see that it has the loop and start information. If you go back, let's say that you load a map and then you edit the loops and you change the loops, you can actually go in, hit the load button and actually say, update all files in the group to update loot information. If you loop these later after you've made the original sample maps, I've done that before. It works. It's, it's very nice. So now if I go save SFC instrument as this is spiteful spirit. So we want to go to samples and we want to go to cool synth maps and right here, not in the samples folder, but above right next to it, we want to say, uh, Mega Magic Pads. Spiteful Spirit Wet. Okay. So now when I go over here and I say Cool Synth Maps, there it is. And now. They load. They play. Right? So you can make maps that are keyboard. If you have some bass samples, guitars, instrument samples that have multiple samples, every note could be a sample. And again, if I was to layer, let's say, let's go to these drum sounds. And just for fun, because I'm crazy, I'm going to go to Bjorn Sample Mapper. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, close this. I'm going to drag all of these samples over and I'm going to say start at C1. Every note's a new sample. Import to a new group. Boom. So it's made a map with all these drum sounds. And I could go save as, and let's call this Spiteful Spirit 2. Now you'll notice some samples are in this folder. Some samples are in another folder. It's still going to work. It's really, really cool for that fact. So now when we go over here, we say Spiteful Spirit 2, I have, and I have that drum sample and it's going to randomly choose whether it plays the drum sample on that note or it's going to play the sample. You can get some crazy stuff. Like if you like layer a couple different guitars, there's all sorts of wonderful things. You can have as many layers as you want. It's just memory <laughs> so you can do that kind of stuff if you want as well it's it you can get kind of carried away and do some crazy things it's just an sfc file if you take a look inside of here at the sfc files in a text editor open this is what an SFC sample maps looks like. So it's got this looping information. It's got the node information, the location information of the samples, all generated for you. This is what unifies Guru Sampler reads to make the sample map. So that's it. Once you've made the sample map and saved it, it's done. Now you have to do inside a unify. Let's go over here to Guru Sampler. Uh, cool drums, S1, close this. So go save, change the name. This is drum kit, uh, cymatics, S1, drums. Well, I don't need to say drums because I said it already. Uh, this is more of like a trap kit. Um, and then just go save as to make it a new... Well, come over here. Save as gives you the chance to save a new file. So if I go down here to my libraries, here's my library directory for Zippy Sample Bank. And here is the starting map, which I could now change and point to Zippy Sample Bank, to Cymatics, to there, boom. Hold down Option and click Save. That's the same as opening this up and hit Update, which is really nice and fast. So now I have that. I could go over here, change this instead of cymatics, go to glitch machines. This is glitch machines, composite one, save. Uh, one, 
save as, and it's over here on this page again, save, open up Guru Sampler, change this to number two, save, GM composite two, save as, because you need to make a new file. Once again, it comes over here. Uh, you can get to become a pretty serious little factory, and in no time at all, you will have literally thousands of samples to play with in Unify that are your own library of samples that you have acquired for as long as you've been doing this. And if you want to know how many samples you have, do a search for .wav files. You'll find that you have bazillions and bazillions and bazillions. Hope this helps. The best way to say thank you to us for these videos and for making Unify is to buy libraries that pays our bills and keeps us doing this for real time. You win because you got new inspiring sounds to work with. So I thank you for helping keep us rocking. Okay. Thank you. See you in the next one.